Even as I speak, uh, family conversations about finding a job, paying the bills, or even where our economy is headed are core topics at kitchen tables all across the city. Those conversations are understandably worrisome because they all impact our struggle to prosper, both as separate families and as a unified city. Hi, I'm Vincent Gray, Mayor of the District of Columbia. As many of you know, one of the major priorities of my One City agenda is economic development and job creation in the District of Columbia. I've already put together a talented economic team for tackling those goals, and as they say in sports, we have a game plan. Joining me today to talk about the plans to help grow our economy are two members of our economic development team, Victor Hoskins, Deputy Mayor for Economic Development, and Harriet Tregoning, Director of the Office of Planning. How are you all today? Great. Well, I'm glad to have you all here because I don't think there's uh, too many subjects that are more important than that. Uh, you go out into the city and you hear people constantly talking about jobs. Unemployment, uh, you know, is nine and a half percent last time we looked. Uh, in some areas of the city, very low. In some areas of the city, east of the river, extremely high. So let me start with uh, asking both of you. Harriet, you are involved in planning. Victor, you have the, uh, the larger uh, picture uh, on your agenda. Uh, what would you all say are the principal development and planning goals for us as we move forward in 2011? Victor, why don't we start with you? Well, Mayor, um, first of all, there are quite a few projects that are that are actually moving ahead that have been sitting still for a while, um, and we're really happy to see that. Um, it looks like um, right on the horizon we have Shops of the Dakota uh, about to take off. We're looking at uh, uh, groundbreaking sometime in August, and that's very exciting. It's 450,000 square feet of retail, something that the community needs. Um, it'll be a Costco, a Target, um, and in a very strategic location uh, for the city. So the great services, um, services are needed, project that has been sitting around for a while um, moving forward. Um, we also are going to have um, parcel um, 2M uh, at Northwest 1 um, do a groundbreaking. Um, it's about um, 240 plus units mm -hmm. um, right on North Capitol. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that has been another project that had been stalled for a while and is now moving forward. And our, uh, our goal is really to, um, to really go through that list of priorities that you have set um, where jobs are going to be created, like these retail jobs, where um, affordable housing is going to be provided, like with, this, um, like with Northwest One, and, and get them moving um, straight ahead. Harriet, you've had responsibility for planning. And that's not an easy job because it's assembling uh, ideas, but even more so bringing people together and trying to get them on the same page. What, from your perspective, are the things that we ought to be pursuing uh, as we move through 2011 and then into 2012 from a job creation economic development perspective? Well, I think that there are a couple of things that are really important, and I'm happy to say that we're nearing the end of our uh, initial study of the streetcar line and the land uses around uh, the proposed 37-mile-plus streetcar system. And one of the things that we really focused on is uh, what you know? How can we use an investment like a streetcar to really increase the access to jobs that people have around the city? The amazing thing is, uh, you know, we think about metro access and what we call <coughs> premium transit in terms of the metro system, mm -hmm. um, but what the streetcar will do was a, was basically double the number of people in the city who will have access to premium transit. So. You know, fixed guideway, you know, on rails mm -hmm. in their neighborhood. It really changes uh, where and how people can access uh, this great transit service and how many jobs they can reach in a much shorter period of time. So that's one big thing that we're working on. Are people accepting the streetcars? Uh, you know, I've, I've been to Portland, I've seen the system there, I think it's fantastic. But how, what's been the reception across the city? I think it varies from neighborhood to neighborhood. There are lots of folks who remember streetcars, mm -hmm. you know, who are old enough to remember when uh, the last streetcars in the 1960s were, were, were taken out. And think of it as a, almost a failed transportation mm -hmm. system, something we tried and that didn't work. Um, you know, I think for a lot of neighborhoods, they're a little skeptical about whether or not that old streetcar system that they remember is something that can really serve a bustling modern city like Washington. For others who have who have who've ridden a modern streetcar in Portland, um, in other places, uh, I think they're pretty excited to see streetcar come to their community. So, mm -hmm. you know, I say to people who are skeptical, let's kick the tires of our first line that'll open in 2013 on mm -hmm. H Street, and, uh, and and see how it serves the city. But I think it'll serve it pretty well. Yeah, and it is a different system than you know 40 or 50 years ago. Uh, very different. 
different approach. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the streetcars and look forward to them coming back uh, to the city. Listen, we were involved recently in a, in a Ward 8 summit, and uh, for me, my own opinion is it was a fantastic experience. Just hundreds of people uh, who came out, a lot of energy and enthusiasm. What can people expect in the aftermath? You know, when you raise hopes like that, you know, especially in an area where unemployment is so high, there isn't much economic development, uh, people start to become uh, more optimistic about the future. What can we tell people that they can expect, uh, Victor? Well, along the major corridors was one of the places that they said was high priority for them. They all indicated that actually the infill uh, development and the um, really construction on those vacant lots or renovation of dilapidated buildings along major corridors was high priority. That was the mm -hmm. first priority. And the second was actually St. Elizabeth's, which it is, is a, a very good help for us in terms of where do we put our effort. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do um, under your direction is redeploy our resources and we are going to have um, staff recruiting specifically for those corridors. Um, as you know, we've been meeting with entrepreneurs, um, particularly restaurants and mm -hmm. retailers um, about the entire city well, we're now going to concentrate that um, effort with um, one or two staff people on those major corridors. Because the only way that we're really going to get people there is by taking them there. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, yesterday we met with a, um, a group that uh, expressed an interest, and now we have to get them out in the field and see four or five sites in those corridors and then turn that into a transaction. It just, it's just they, what they're going to see is a lot of blocking and tackling. Mm -hmm. um, we've already st we're going to start some work on demolishing some of the vacant buildings um, that we can um, and renovate some of the facades that we can, um, that we have some control over. And we've met with um, uh, the Anacostia Economic Development Corporation and, and a couple of the ANC members in the area um, to identify projects that are ready to go, uh, as they say. Um, Harrod, you are a planner, and that means you're always looking ahead. Um, people look at the District of Columbia as a government town, you know, as a town that is steeped in tourism and hospitality. As we look at the future, um, should we think, can we real realistically think that there will be, you know, new types of jobs coming to the city? And if so, what, what things should we be thinking about? Absolutely. We should look at this future and, and see new kinds of jobs. I think that, you know, you've really put your finger on an identity issue for the district that we've really faced for a long time, that the, our identity as the seat of the federal government is so overwhelming that all these other wonderful things about the city sort of don't see any airtime. I call that sometimes that that government identity our Clark Kent identity <laughs> but we actually have all these superhero identities that are really mm -hmm. amazing I mean we're the international city you know we have a hundred and seventy missions and foreign embassies here in the city we have the World Bank we have the IMF you know we'd be the international city if people didn't know you know about our Clark Kent identity we're the we're the education city we have all these colleges and universities here we'd be a college town mm -hmm. you know at, much as Boston is known as a college town if we if, if you know if people knew more about it we're the creative city. You know, we have so many performing arts mm -hmm. organizations, cultural organizations, you know, more than 70 museums, you know, amazing amounts of culture. And that's where a lot of the job growth is coming. Mm -hmm. You know, in that creative cultural um, arena, we are the number one destination for college graduates, mm -hmm. you know, and, and folks are coming here, you know, with all kinds of uh, ideas about the kinds of businesses they'd like to start, the kind of enterprises they'd like to be involved in. I mean, one of the exciting things is that for every city, uh, who knows what the economy is going to be in 20 years, but with all these bright young people in Washington, I feel like whatever it's going to be, it'll be invented right here. So both of you are optimistic that we'll be able to broaden our horizons uh, from some of the, uh, the ways in which the city has operated in the past. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Well, listen, I want to thank both of you for coming. Uh, you are invested with an enormous responsibility, and I'm absolutely confident that both of you are up to the task, and I love working with you every day. Thank you. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right. As we work to help grow uh, the economy and grow jobs in the district, an important question is, what's our game plan uh, for matching good jobs with a competitive workforce? Coming up, our learn-to-earn strategy uh, involving job training in D.C. Inside One City. We'll be back in just a minute. My question is how will the city guarantee that new business development is fairly distributed to all wards of the city?